Welcome to the lecture 4 of uh, power system protection. So in this lecture we will cover uh, the remaining or the uh, will continue CTs and PTs. So let us see. So we will discuss here uh, first the CTs the ratio and phase angle error of the CTs and PTs. Now you can see here in this figure, here this figure uh, in fact is typical example where one relay <coughs> is connected uh, via uh, or the CT and PT they are feeding the signal to the relay. Relay is having the current coil and the protection uh, sorry the potential coil so the potential coil is being fed by the potential transformer and the current coil is being fed by the current transformer okay, and the load is connected here so, so the relay will detect if some fault happens here somewhere right now we'll see the uh, current transformer a, a, a circuit diagram or the equivalent circuit of the current transformer you can see here exactly it is uh, matching with the equivalent circuit of the transformer what it is shown here that is exactly equal to the transformer equivalent circuit so you can see here uh, because ct is current transformer it's basically transformer uh, it gives it, it it makes the current high current that is flowing in the transmission network uh, to a to the smaller value and it is fed to the relay circuit so the equivalent circuit is exactly like transformer but there are certain assumptions later on it will be uh, uh, the equivalent circuit will be modified now we can see here the primary winding is having the resistance R1 and the leakage reactance is L1 sorry L1 and here the source is VP connected source and it's the primary winding and the and the secondary winding here it is the, it, it, it is we can say the ideal CT like in case of transformer also we consider this as ideal transformer so here it is ideal ct and similarly in the secondary side we have the resistance r2 the winding resistance the coil resistance and l2 is your uh, leakage resistance of the secondary winding and the burden is connected this burden is having resistance rv and lv which is nothing they are there the this indicates the relay right this burden is nothing but the relay is connected at the load load end or we can say this burden is relay right now how to model in the city exactly <coughs> this is in fact there are certain assumptions it is assumed that the city primary is connected to a current source because obviously it is a current so we can assume it as a current source because because in fact we are measuring the current and the conductor which is uh, passing in the primary side it is a single conductor or it is having single winding and in fact it there is no voltage source right so therefore we can assume it as the current source in the primary side and if we we'll see see the city, it in fact looks like this. The city is like this coil. This is a coil where uh, this is a electromagnet where the coil is being owned, right? And it is having two terminals, and a single conductor is passed through this. So this is the transmission line and this is the ct right so therefore we can say that in the primary side a current source is connected right so primary winding resistance and the leakage reactance are neglected basically because 
in the primary side the winding is a single conductor but sometime if if it is a bar type ct we can have two uh, we can have uh, more uh, number of turns not very much like two turns or three turns like that so therefore in, in that sense the primary winding resistance uh, and the leakage reactants are neglected magnetizing impedance from the primary side as i have we have seen there the magnetizing uh, impedance is there in uh, in the primary side and it can be shifted to the secondary side the load on the secondary side are the relay burden in fact i told it that load is nothing but that relay relay burden and also it includes the lead wire resistances right so now we can see the equivalent circuit of the city where we here you can see here uh, one ideal current source is connected here to the primary side and the resistance at the primary side is rp and the leakage reactance is xlp okay so this is nothing but xlp and then the turns ratio is np np is the primary side ns is the secondary side turns ratio and jdp is nothing but the exciting impedance at the primary side which will be shifted to the secondary side and rs and uh, xs they are the secondary side resistance and xls is the secondary side uh, leakage reactance and the load here is nothing but the relay which is connected uh, at the load end and here after assumption after considering the assumption we have neglected here uh, the rp and uh, rp and x x l p the the primary side and the turns ratio remain as it is and j e p which is the primary side exciting impedance which is shifted to the secondary side which is marked as j e only j e right so that is nothing but the secondary side exciting impedance uh, then rs and xls remain as it is rs is the secondary side resistance and xls is the uh, leakage reactance at the secondary side and jb that is nothing but uh, the relay plus uh, lead wire impedance okay that is re that represents the relay and the lead wire impedance Okay, so this is your final model you can say this model will consider for further analysis okay, now this is the simplified model after transferring the primary side equivalent circuit to the secondary side now ip is transferred to the secondary side it became is where the relation is uh, you know ip by is is nothing but ns by np okay so this is the relation already we know this from the transformer and jd is the uh, exciting impedance referred to the secondary side right so already we know this and rs is the secondary side resistance and xls is the leakage impedance the secondary side and jb is nothing but the burden that is that is nothing that is nothing but the relay plus the uh, impedance of the wire connecting wire <coughs> now let us draw the phasor diagram let us start from the load end that is from the burden side to the primary side <coughs> so let us plot first the bb okay so after plotting bb we will get this which is we have take we are taking here bb as reference uh, phasor okay then uh, well, let us uh, draw ib which is flowing here you can see here ib ib is here which is flowing in the uh, burden okay and ib is <laughs> in fact lagging bb by some angle and if we'll plot uh, 
then we, we need to find the EB which is where here which is somewhere here right across the E across ZE right so EB will plot EB right so let us plot EB and so EB will be sum of the VB plus IBRS plus J of IBXLS right so now this will give and that is not EB that is in fact ES okay so that sorry that is ES so ES is nothing but a sum of VB ES is nothing but VB plus IBRS plus J IB XLS okay so this is plotted here right so that will give us ES okay now we'll see uh, IE also a current will flow through the exciting uh, branch uh, the magnetizing branch right that is IE exciting current so therefore your IS will be the sum of your IS will be equal to sum of IB plus IE obviously phasor sum right so we can write it as phasor sum <coughs> so we know that IE is in fact <coughs> approximately it will lag by lag by 90 degree to the ES so here it is lagging by 90 degree to ES now if we we'll plot IS then IS is sum of IB plus IE so now I can write, I can see here, IS is the sum of IB plus IE. And the angle difference between IS and IB, that is here, this angle, this angle is called phase angle error. Okay. In fact, the phase angle, the ideal phase angle should be this, that is the phase angle of IB. But IS is in fact is the secondary current which is creating another phase angle that that in fact creates the error phase angle error and that phase angle error is nothing but the angle between the IB and IS okay and it is in fact because of the exciting current in the magnetizing branch of the uh, transformer or magnetizing branch of the equivalent circuit of the transformer Oh, let us define now the <coughs> ratio error and the phase angle error. So, ratio error is in fact uh, defined as actual ratio minus ideal ratio divided by the ideal ratio. Okay. So, what is this ideal ratio? Ideal ratio, let us say, uh, represent this as N. So I can write ideal ratio n is equal to n s by n p, which is nothing but i p by i s. Okay. So this is your ideal ratio. And what is actual ratio? Actual ratio, if I'll write n dash as actual ratio, actual ratio is nothing but it is IP by IB. Okay. So now let us see how will what result we'll get. So in fact, if I'll write IP here, this is your actual ratio. So IP, how can I write this as? So N is your ideal ratio. And IP, I can write this as NIB plus IEP. <laughs> because from this this relation I can write IP as equal to N of IS and IS is nothing but it is equal to IB plus IE okay so here IE is the secondary exciting current right so if I will represent the secondary exciting current as the primary exciting current I can write it as IB plus 
I E P by N. Okay. So then it will be approximately N I B plus I E P. Okay. So therefore I P will be equal to this. So what we are getting here N I B plus I E P. Okay. <coughs> this is <coughs> approximately equal. And so then by dividing IB at both the side, so we'll get IP by IB, which is nothing but the actual ratio, right? So actual ratio is nothing but it is equal to IP by IB, which is nothing but it is equal to N plus IEP by IB. Okay, so now we can substitute this actual ratio here in this equation, right? So, in this, by substituting here, uh, <coughs> the expression of uh, actual ratio in the ratio error, so we'll get this expression, right? Very well, we can find this. Ratio error will be IEP by NIB, that is equal to nothing but IE by IB. So this is your uh, formula for ratio error. Okay. Now I define the ratio error. Similarly, the phase angle error already I have shown in the phasor diagram that you can uh, derive also expression or you can uh, find out from the phasor diagram uh, the what is the phase angle error. Okay. So, so then we will see uh, the ANSI or IEEE classification of CTs. ANSI or IEEE standards classify CTs into two types. One is class T CTs and other one is class C CTs. In fact, the class T CTs uh, are own type CT and it is with one or more primary tones on, on, on a core. It is having one or more primary tones. It has high leakage flux, in fact. And therefore, its performance can be determined only by test. So its performance uh, only can be determined by the test. So the CT burden should be kept as low as possible when this type of CT is in use. So now we can see the typical characteristics of uh, <coughs> the magnetizing uh, curve or the magnetizing characteristic of the CT. This type of CT, T class or class T CTs, right? So here the plot is between IS and IP. And here you can see here uh, the magnetizing B is uh, equal to uh, 0 0.1 uh, Sorry, this is uh, so B equal to point for B equal to point 0.5 or point 0.4. Uh, sorry, B equal to point 0.5, 4, and point 0.1. This, this is these characteristics have been plotted for the three values of B. One is for B equal to point 0.1, B equal to point 0.5, and B equal to 4. So for B equal to 4, it is more uh, saturated, right? You can see here. So therefore, it is uh, always recommended that the, the performance is determined based on the test. So now, if you'll see the class C sheet is <laughs> its leakage flux is very small. So it is more accurate, and its performance can be evaluated from the standard exciting course. <laughs> so there are standard exciting curves given by IEEE or ANSI. It can be taken and the performance can be evaluated from those standard curves. And the ratio error is always maintained within 10% plus minus 10%. So these are the standard uh, characteristic or standard curves uh, which is the plot of secondary RMS 
or you can say the secondary RMS exciting voltage versus the exciting current at the secondary side. Okay. Now these are the typical uh, typical characteristics given for different uh, CT ratios, current ratio and turns ratio, and for which the secondary side resistance is given here, right? And these are all standard characteristic. Considering the standards, we can evaluate the performance of the CT. So we'll see the examples uh, in this lecture also. So let us see some examples. <laughs> then <coughs> I will solve few examples. Then I will give you a few examples to solve as assignment. So this is one of the example where the CT ratio is given. The CT ratio is 1200 is to 5. And it's a C400 CT with excitation curves shown on the so C400 what it indicates in fact C400 means the maximum voltage that can be induced across the burden can be 400 volt that indicates the C400 okay with excitation curves as shown in the previous slide right is connected to a 2 ohm burden 2 ohm burden means it is the resistance of the relay okay here this is the relay resistance so based on the accuracy or uh, accuracy classification what is the maximum symmetrical fault current that may be applied to this city without exceeding 10% ratio error okay 10% ratio error and this is a C type CT clearly it is mentioned here so now we'll refer to the standard curves and now we'll find the maximum symmetrical fault current that it can handle that means this CT can handle okay the CT ratio is given here it is 1200 is to 5 or 1200 by 5 and this is your standard curve already uh, we have seen right these are the standard curves okay now the secondary resistance is given that is 0.61 ohm and the relay burden is given that is 2 ohm so for 20 times the rated secondary current that is 100 ampere so we are taking 20 times because this is a general principle that <laughs> the fault current is generally assumed as 20 percent of the normal current so the normal secondary side current is 5 ampere right here it is 5 ampere and if we we'll take the 20 times of the rated this is the rated current rated secondary current it will be 100 ampere right now for the 100 ampere if we we'll calculate the secondary side voltage I will calculate 100 into 2 plus 0.61 if <laughs> we will refer to the uh, equivalent circuit of the CT in the secondary side we have the uh, we have the uh, secondary side resistance plus the burden resistance so that is nothing but 2 plus 0.61 so that lead to 261 volts which is less than the knee point of the city you will see the city standard city curve for 1200 is to 5 right so now you can see 261 will lie somewhere here that is below the knee point right okay that means uh, it is following the linear region so it will not saturate it is not following the saturation region right so then the approximate limit on the secondary current is given by then in the 
<laughs> approximate limit on the secondary current will be how much I told you <laughs> 400 will be the maximum uh, voltage across the secondary side it can produce so therefore the maximum limit on the secondary current will be how much it will be 400 divided by 2.61 that is the total resistance of the secondary side okay now that will give us 153 ampere in the secondary side that means 153 ampere up to 153 ampere of the secondary current that is the limit which the CT can measure right then the maximum fault current how much it can uh, measure so 153 is the secondary side current into the turns ratio that is 1200 by 5 which will give us 36720 ampere that means this is the maximum fault current that CT can measure or CT can measure and give the feedback to the relay okay so this is one of the example and in next example is uh, the same CT is considered 1200 is to 5 and also it is a C type CT and and the voltage that can be produced across the secondary side is 400 volt and that is connected on uh, 1000 by 5 tap okay. in fact in some cities there are taps so on various taps we can connect so it is connected at 1000 by 5 tap so what is the maximum secondary burden that can be used and we can maintain rated accuracy at 20 times the rated symmetrical secondary current okay so this is your question so question is what should be the maximum secondary burden that means we need to find the rb rb max okay so the secondary voltage corresponding to the tap is 1000 is to 5 so therefore we will consider here the standard CT curve for 1000 is to 5 not 1200 is to 5 okay so therefore the voltage uh, the secondary side voltage that can be produced maximum secondary side voltage that can be accommodated or that can be uh, that can be bear by the CT will be 1000 by <coughs> 1200 into 400 that is 333 volt and the secondary current will be <laughs> 20 times the normal current normal rated current that will be 100 ampere and now this formula will use that is Vs equal to Is into Rs plus Rb and Rs we know from the calibration curve or from the standard curve if we'll see this from the standard curve for 1000 is to 5 the the, the resistance is 0.51 right here we can see here so therefore we'll take it as 0.51 from the calibration curve and now by substituting uh, in this equation we'll find this equation we'll find 333 is equal to 100 into 0.51 plus rb so that will give us the maximum burden that can be considered okay for so your secondary burden will be 2.72 ohm so that is the maximum burden maximum burden means minimum resistance and minimum burden means maximum resistance so this is the minimum resistance as burden which will be which can be used for uh, this this kind of uh, arrangement okay so now few examples are here three example four example five example six now using this uh, the standard curve standard characteristic 
and this equivalent circuit please do these examples these four examples example 3 4 5 6 and please submit this uh, maybe by the next week okay so thank you very much so we'll end here lecture number four and we'll see we'll see next class lecture number five thank you very much